Good evening and welcome to It Is A The Dark Crusade, Season 2. Um, we start our scene tonight with Sister Madeline making her way to through the streets of Riverside, accompanied by her two servants or ghouls, for those who know. Um, they are moving at a fairly reasonable pace. It's not too late in the evening. They are going to, she is going to, accompanied by these two, to a small church under an invitation. She's, she has a mixture of feelings at the moment, not really knowing exactly what to expect, but oh well. Uh, she will, uh, when they get to the church, she will instruct her two ghouls to just uh, one of them, or both of them, to accompany her inside, but, um, you know, not necessarily be active, just watch and see what happens, and if there is any danger or anything, then do what they are trained to do. Yeah, um, inside the church, um, Father Louis has made overtures to uh, the priest here that he would uh, like to like to speak with him on spiritual matters and a small offering of um, to his uh, poor box has uh, bought his ear for at least at least an hour or so. And um, yeah, it is um, just the two of them in the church. It's not that big. It seats maybe around um, maybe around forty. And there is a, yeah, it's a basically wooden building with a cross and an altar at one end and uh, pews. And the two of them are sitting at the front of the pews and in discussion as you enter. Hmm. Ah, Father, my, my friend is here. Ah, I see. Um... Please come in, sister. How does the night find you? I don't see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just invite well to come in. Padre, well enough. I ask uh, your invitation. Might I know what this is about? I simply wanted to talk about spiritual matters. I'm not a priest myself. But uh, I thought uh, the good father here. Uh, does he have a name, Chris? Father Thomas, it seems. Father Thomas. Yeah, the good the good uh, Father Thomas here would uh, be able to offer you wiser advice than me. And I thought a display of. Um, Genuality might might go some ways. I feel that you, uh, I feel that we've come off on rather the wrong foot. There is some misunderstanding between us. I do not believe so. We have not spoken too much. One was a fairly short conversation, and another was assisting a young woman who was distraught. She was, poor child. Some deal and avails her, no doubt, Father Thomas. Oh. That is most unfortunate. Well, if you happen to run into her again, know that she's welcome here. Madeline just some... shoots Louis, Louis a look, and uh, she just looks to the priests. And she, she looks a little confused, and uh, she just... Uh, Would you come sit with the sister? Yes, please, take a seat. You're more than welcome. Madeline takes a seat, still looks a little perplexed at the two, and she says, <clears throat> so tell me exactly what it is that you want me to have better advice for? In due time. Firstly, Father Thomas, would you care to describe the uh, 
the church's presence in Odessa. For our sister here, she has, is new to this city. The presence of the church of uh, our Lord and Saviour is, I am sad to say, uh, rather small as of present. But we, uh, it has only bolstered our resolve. We always do our utmost to help the people of this city, enlighten them, uh, and, uh, the one who uh, died for their sins, and to bring them under their wing so that they uh, might see the light, as it were, so that we might help them. Which is um, good. But there are many unbelievers in the city, are there not? The infidels and also those who are wrapped up in other matters, those that worship coin or lust or the bottle. Yes, this is very much a city afflicted uh, via many illnesses. It is our duty to tend to them all, particularly the sins of uh, a serene drink, as you say, and coin in the uh, poor neighborhood of Riverside. It's something we unfortunately see all too much. It's true. Have you seen the situation, Madeline? And how does it make you feel? Does it not make your good Christian heart flutter at the injustice of it all? But God is being denied his rightful position above all. The priest looks sad. I see it. Well, not too differently from you, but my. I see that it offers a lot of opportunity. It offers you, and she points to the two of them, or not points to them, but just indicates to the two of them. It allows you to show the kindness of your hearts and help those less fortunate. It allows the less fortunate to learn from their misgivings and their lot in life to improve themselves. If my life uh, ends with even only one soul, uh, being convinced of the righteousness of uh, the Lord, then I will consider it well live. Shall we pray for the city, the three of us? I believe that would be most good, yes. And Will Thomas. will um, take Father Thomas's hands in his own, grasp them, and begin to pray. Would you care to pray with us, Sister Madeline? I know he will actually get on the floor on his knees. Yeah, there's like a little, uh, how to put it, um, uh, like a little small altar of a crucifix, like nothing fancy. This is a very small church. And uh, yeah, he begins the prayer. Our dark father that walks among us, cursed is thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on hell as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily sin, and forgive us our virtues as we destroy those who inflict virtue upon us. And let us lead them into temptation and deliver them to evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory from now till Gehenna. Amen. And he looks uh, for a reaction from the priest at this rather heretical bastardization of the Lord's Prayer. Yeah, literally every aspect of it, uh, a cruel heresy, uh, apart from one uh, aspect. He, 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 he looked confused at first, then horrified, then a look of horrified, uh, of, of horrified confusion as you, as you reach the end of your prayer and say the words Gehenna, something he, he is far beyond this mortal's understanding. As he, if he tries I to fucking it. knew it. There, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. It's it's Robbie. What do you expect? Yeah, I mean, like, 
how long is he going to keep this up? But yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. Okay. okay. Father Louis grasps his hands as he tries to pull away, gripping them ever tighter with his potent strength. And in fact, we'll drop a couple of blood into um, strength just to make sure. And uh, yeah, he will uh, pull out his fangs, revealing a much more monstrous visage. And he, I will um, roll dread gaze against this priest. Uh, yeah, oh wait, I need to do the scene in Dice Roller 3. Uh, dice Roller 2, I've already started. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So what's his willpower? Oh no, it's his courage plus wits, I think. Um, I, I just rolled a, a uh, manipulation subterfuge to see to not react too much to it. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm just going to say, this is a regular human, so probably D4. Okay. Uh, oh, that God. gives me. Uh, that you... gives me four successes still. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. This. This. This man for for all his supposed uh. Uh, righteousness for, for all his uh, holy of unfoul spouting uh, sees you uh, unveil your fangs sees you growl at him uh, hiss at him in, in such uh, monstrous fashion that, that it sparks that primal uh, flight in him this unholy fear that grasps his heart as he screams and desperately and futilely uh, in futility tries to flee from your grasp. Louis holds him tight and uh, he will continue the uh, dread gaze until he is cowering uh, all will and uh... Madeline no, at this I'll, point I'll say, you're going to eat then do it. There's no reason for him to suffer this way. I like to play with my food. And uh, yeah, well, what does what does the priest do? He's cowering. The priest, uh, yeah, the, the the priest is literally trying to tear tear his arms off at this point, almost uh, the amount that he's he's pulling to the point where uh, he ends up because uh, because obviously you don't even flinch as he tries to pull away from you. Um, but he just ends up almost um, basically falling over, trying to get away from you. Um, you're still in here. You still grasp him easily. You still have his hands in your own. Um, Louis drags him towards the altar, and he's like, "Are you scared, Father? Would you like to pray? Maybe your God will hear you. Pray to him, and he will pin him to the altar." Um, Sweet. I, you you see him. Um, uh, but try almost. As yeah, he, tries he almost to tries to pray and then just just breaks down halfway through just screaming from help god help me god help me oh god please um, help me madeline will just interject in the middle of that screaming going up and just saying your life may be very very ending very soon take this moment take this thread and learn from it at least Quite. do that instead of wasting your breath Quite wrong, sister. His life is not begin ending. It is just beginning. You cry out to your God, Father Thomas, and he doesn't answer. You cry out to your God, and he does not hear you. So pray to me. I am your God now. And he will... Um, he's going to use level three presence, and he's going to um, basically uh, um, vomit blood into his mouth. Uh, um... Fuck, that's it. That's a shitload of successes. 
Yeah, he 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 screamed. He's like, ah! <laughs> as he like is literally <laughs> begins choking on your blood because you just vomit blood into him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, William. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Father Louis will basically bring him in for an open-mouthed kiss, and I will vomit blood into his system. And, uh, yeah. And then he will, once that's done, he will turn to Sister Madeline and uh, lick his, lick his uh, blood-stained lips. <sighs> I apologize for the theatrics. It's a... I thought you might enjoy the show. That is quite all right. I sensed that you were no friend to the church in this place. When I spoke of it, you seemed uncomfortable. A very specific part of the church is uh, quite the uh, adversary of mine. For more than one reason. Uh, and if he the priest, are you going to kill him or are we going to have to deal with him? He's quivering and now actually reciting the prayer Father Louis said to him before, uh, to Father Louis himself. He was a good man, a virtuous man. He tried to help these people. I'll change that. I'll put him to true use. Yes, my lord, please put him to use. I hate the church, Sister Madeline. I hate everything it stands for. I wish to bring it down. Weakness. Bring, tear down the hypocrisy and the false Pharisees. Weakness and control of those who should lead, or those who should bring this world forward. I yes, yes, agree. lead us. Quite. I'm new to the city, but I'm looking for friends. Those who see eye to eye, those who see the corruption and the evil that the church and its mewling masses of cattle bring. There is a reason. Friend. There is a very good reason now called Sister Madeleine. I used to be a cloistered sister. But it was only when I was thrown out of the cloister and almost died as a result that I truly saw the church for what it was. All those noble in the church, pouring, stealing, robbing, Everything. It is a facade, a facade that is built of lies, that I can no longer use for anything. And I have posters in particular I would bring down if I could. I would help you destroy this cloister. I must admit, I don't mind the lying, I don't mind the whoring, I don't mind the gluttony. It's the hypocrisy I hate, Madeline. It's the lying. I do not lie very often. I do not like it as well. It is what most troubles me. And the supplication of people like myself. If you wish to lie, put it to good use. I obviously have been lying in my whole demeanor. As you did well. If you need to lie, you have to do it well. If you do not, well, you will get caught and that will not be very advisable. Quite. There are many of our kind in this city who follow this god, who see themselves as somehow virtuous and right and use it to justify all sorts of things. I want to associate with people who see through the bullshit, see us for what we really are, monsters, creatures of this world, creatures of evil, creatures of the temporal, creatures that don't lie to ourselves about what we truly are. That's the kind of friends I want, Madeline. Like I said, I do not lie. My existence has been dedicated to something not so much what we are, but how we become more, how we improve ourselves. It is not too dissimilar from yours. Lies. Well, it is not something I really do a lot of. I try to be as honest as possible. Do you say you don't tell a lot of lies? 
And that I is think you must have been I know. <laughs> I'm joking. So, what do we say, Sister Madeline? Are there others in the city who may see this way? Others who've seen the truth? I'd like to meet them. Of those I know, quite a few are sadly deluded. But too many. Honestly, well, within my clan, there there is one you would probably associate myself with. He is well, actually, an outspoken uh, or outspokenly hostile to the church itself. I've heard of him. I think. What is he? I heard of a magister who has outlandish opinions. He sounds intriguing. He is a true scholar of our plans, more exotic age. Huh? Well, Madeline, you will be doing me a huge favor if I could meet him. I wish I to can... keep this facade for the foreseeable future. The righteous Obviously. priest. It makes, it puts people at ease. I must say, I must commend your uh, charade. Your masquerade is very good. You must have spent a lot of time perfecting it, or maybe you are very skilled at it. A long time, I think. Traveling through the various baronies of Europe to get here. Prince is a lot more accepting of a traveling righteous bruja. Well, allow me to welcome you. As one of the members, truly welcome you to a desk. There are those of us who are more pragmatic. But then again, if we were to look for such people who would be sharing our opinion, well, if there were many, which there undoubtedly are, that does not count myself or Sini and yourself, well, most, well, most long-living canines would probably do quite the same thing as you. Well, it might take a little while, but we might find out. You know. Time. Time is something we have, is it not? I don't think we do. But masquerading as a righteous, and she says that clearly not meaning it, a righteous kindred believing in whatever. They are perhaps as well as you in hiding. Well, let us see then. I look forward to working together soon. Likewise. Now, and he uh, hoists up the mumbling priest by his arm. I'm going to take this one back to my haven. He tells me he was uh, given to a monastery when he was very young. So I'm going to go deflower him. Hmm. Indeed, she says. Do what you will. He, he's not really saying anything at this point. He, he's just kind of mewling there in your presence. He's happy with this. And uh, for the record, Chris, I would like to buy this chap as a um, retainer at some point. No problem. And uh, yeah, he will then, uh, I'll take my leave then, Sister Madeline. And uh, he actually goes oh. over to the um, baptismal font filled with the pure uh, holy water and uh, will basically wash himself off in it. Again, incredibly uh, disrespectfully. Uh, I assume it's not actual real holy water. Oh god, no. From Riverside, not Abraham Fountain. <laughs> uh, Madeline will, will have a quick look to see if there is no like immediate traces. Yeah. Uh, and then she will as well leave the church. And uh, yeah, I think we can call that scene 
Praise the Dark Father.